Welcome back to Stationers, and we are just exiting our hydroponics bay. <laughs> and you may notice the interface looks a little bit different. Well, if you're on the beta branch, Dean Hall's finally folded. <laughs> so happy about this. For years, well, not years, for months he's been basically saying this inventory system is great, it's what, what you need to do, this is just more realistic. And everyone has been saying, yeah, but we really want in mouse inventory, and he's just been rejecting it for months. Finally, it looks like he's folded, or at least someone at the studio has folded. Uh, because now if I press 3 and 4, for instance, I can hold down left alt, and I can just drag stuff out. Remember the fiddly system of inventory? Well, that's not necessarily there anymore. You can move things around. The old system does, does still work, so if you want to move stuff out, uh, if I'm moving single items around, there's no problem with that. Very often, of course, I'm just wanting to grab a specific tool, and I don't want to have to scroll wheel through this all the time. It's probably just much easier just to grab this and grab this, and uh, that is done. Oh, you can just trade places as well. Good. It's uh, quite nice that they've got that going. In any case, that's the start of the episode. Um, after, after I did another episode, uh, update episode as well, they decided to come out with all this new stuff. So it is all on the beta branch. Um, do remember that so it won't show up on, on the release just yet. And there's a couple of other things before we get started into the furnace. And it is going to be this episode of the furnaces, I think. Uh, I just wanted to cover the brief stuff in the updates. Um, there is a vending machine, so if you, oh, and I wish they would alphabetize this list. I did get feedback from someone saying that looks like such, it's not such, that's just a rename the machine button. Um, so in here, all the way down in the kit, and I wish this was alphabetized or searchable, I'll have another whinge about that later. There is a vending machine. It costs 50 gold, which I don't have right now. 50 Electrum, of course, which is quite expensive, but we've got quite a, quite a bit of Electrum. Yeah, I've got more than enough Electrum for that later. Uh, steel and solder and uh, that's a vending machine so that's a smart storage system it says it holds 100 items don't know if that means 100 stacks or 100 items 100 stacks will be amazing um 100 items less so uh sort of it's meant to be sort of a smart interface that you can use to decant specific items so for example if you had a bunch of different kinds of food from here you could decant them out one at a time that kind of thing even hook up a system to make people trade for it but um yeah, it's a sort of trading smart interface. We're not going to need it. Well, I'm not going to need it because I'm on my own, obviously. But uh, if you are on a multiplayer server, uh, you'll be able to do it. I may well hook it up later in another episode just to show how it works and give you some examples of how to get that kind of trading system working. That seems to be a good tutorial. Um, however, we are going to need to get to furnaces first. The other thing that we can now do, or at least the logic system has changed, and bear in mind this isn't on release yet, but if you have any uh, logic that is looking at import or export slots, it's going to break after you update to this. I've just <laughs> turned this system off for, for a little while because uh, I still haven't run that spine. I've started it. <laughs> Honestly, look, I'll show you if you don't believe me. Oh, there's even a, uh, an L key for uh, headlamp now, but I don't need that. Yep, so I'm going to run a spine to here, one going that way, and the other one just feeding into this line after a transformer of, of some kind. And we'll have another transformer down the other end and stuff like that. But I just, I'm just out of... Um, out of gold to make more heavy cable coil at the moment, so you know I'll just leave it there for now. We can do the rest of the well, most of the rest of the episode with the regular cable coil. So yeah, we can just shut that down. And let's just see if there's anything new on the electronics before we go into these these new reader types that we can now do. So logic, nope, they're all the same exact ones that we normally used to. Uh, let's just confirm that to make sure it takes. So if I put down a logic reader, that will work as normal. But you'll see it now says construction op constructing option one of six. If I then scroll wheel, you'll see there's a batch reader. So we can now read from multiple devices at once. And that may be the one we use this episode. I may try and sort of uh, use that to gather from the furnaces if there's anything in them or, you know, some, some sort of reason for me not to have to build the same <clears throat> the same circuit for each furnace individually uh the way you'd normally do the furnaces and the way i did them in the last and last season is if we just put the furnace down for a second and i think the input's going to be at the back yeah on these so um so we'll build the room around them so this is the output got the data port at the front the import is going to be at the back obviously there are the buttons they aren't particularly accessible but uh, we're not going to be uh, we're not going to be using them much once things are going. However, uh, what you can do with this, or you, what you used to be able to do, is read the input slot, import slot, I should say, not input, 
I'll the export slot and then say, is there anything in either of them? You didn't need to do any processing of it. You literally just put a writer that was watching the readers. And as soon as one of them changed to one, the writer would just output to the activate and we'll just hit that button completely uh, every time something hit the import slot or export slot. So um, this thing would process quite well, but um, you'd need to have, I think, four electronic pieces per furnace every time. So, we'll, well, we may well try and optimize that a little bit. So that's one new option that you can now do. So Logic Reader, Logic Writer, you already know about. Batch Writer, you already know about. Logic Mirror, I did mention that last episode. We're probably not going to use that, at least for a while. Slot Reader. Now here's the other new one. So if we have a look at uh, our tool here, um, I don't think it's... No, this isn't hooked up yet. Um, I need to make more cable coil, don't I? But let's just choose, let's just choose the auto lathe, I guess. So now we use a slot reader to read a specific slot. So we read the import slot or the export slot, and you only get those two choices. Okay, so it's a much simpler interface, but it's just a different block to actually put down. So import, and then what we're going to read is for the import slot, is it occupied? So is there something in it? Occupant hash, so that is the um, what I was talking about last episode, whereby you can get the exact number of the specific item by using this. So if you put something in, let's say, um, actually in this, in, in our furnace, just for argument's sake, just in the import slot, the, the, the door there, you could read off the hash here, write that down, set it somewhere else, and then say from our smart, from our vending machine or from another system, say... I want this item specifically, and then use electronics to go and retrieve it. So that is very useful. Quantity, damage, class. I'm not sure what class is actually going to do. Maybe that'll be like ores if it's uh, if it's an ore or some other kind of uh, grouping term. Uh, I'd normally think of classes in terms of programming, but uh, maybe not in this case. So I'll have to wait for the documentation to update. This is a very very new item. So <laughs> so we're definitely uh, we're definitely not. Um, well, holding back on this one, we're definitely at the bleeding edge. So what are we going to do for furnaces? What we're going to do, I think, is... First of all, pull that back. I'm going to have a line of them here, and I think I'm going to just remove this again and move it one forward, just so that I can get to the back if I need to. Uh, where's the tool? There we go. And so let's say we have it... Yeah, so is it here, or is it? Is that one too far back? Yeah, that's where it was before. Okay, so it needs to be right in the center of the block. Yeah, that's fine. So we're going to have shoots coming into the back here, and I think I'm going to run them underground. So we will be running through, uh, let's say, through this frame. And this one. Should we have those four frames? That leaves us with enough space to get to the furnaces. So if we go underground here, let me just remove the uh, floors. There's no, there's actually no blocks underneath here. There, there's one there. Yep, those will do. So if we go underground, we're going to bring some shoots into the back. We're going to bring the shoots from a sort of splitter underground. And there's two ways of doing this. Now, no one's really said any particular way that they, they fancy for this kind of thing. So I'm just going to do it the simpler way first. The simpler way is to have this set up here somewhere. Or even down below, it doesn't really matter once it's set up. So we could put an extra floor down there or something with a gap. Um, we're going to just put mining belts into this side of it, probably through a bin of some kind. I've, I've de destroyed it, but through a bin or some or an input uh, to the chutes, something like that. Just drop them in. It'll go into here. It's going to split. So the belt's going to come out first. Then the ores are going to come out. Now, what I may well do, I had this episode, last episode, or not the episode before, I should say, just start putting belts on this line and ores on the other one. What I may well do is put belts and coal on this line, because I don't think we ever want to send coal into the furnace, the arc furnaces. We just want to send ores in there. So mining belts and coal we'll put on this side. Everything else will go that way. Now, from there, we're going to feed that into unconfigured uh, sorters. And I think if we have four, what we should be able to do is have one, imagine this is all underground now, one here, and with shoots going, if you like, underneath and up into the back of this one. 
and then the other chute from the other side going up and into the back of this one. And then you have an identical one here doing the same thing for these four, these two, sorry. So that will split into four furnaces. And in front of the, those, two, uh, those two sorters, we'll have another sorter. And that sorter will again be set to un unspecified and will then split evenly everything it gets to these four furnaces. So it'll split once, then again, just like in Factorio for a splitter. Now, that's a simple version because you can set up the sorter, or so the stacker, to do things a little differently. What we can do is once it's separated through this first section, so we get ores, we could put it into another stacker and use the stacker to split things down into lots of 10 or similar kinds of things like that so that it will evenly distribute even a single stack to four furnaces. I'm not too bothered about that. Uh, I probably will do it later once we move into a larger base maybe, but for now, um, just having one stack go into each arc furnace is perfectly fine by me. I don't think I need any more than that. So if we have you here, you get the idea. We're going to have arc furnaces and I can probably remove that one in there. I'll leave it for now because we may need some more metals in the episode. So it's time for me to drag this out. And I need to go and uh, mine out underneath, remove the floor area so that we can get some more... Um, get some more frames down there and then we'll start to maybe craft some more cable coil and then bring you back for putting some uh, putting some of those shoots in place i'll leave the ordinary parts of the shoot you know just the regular stuff that just feeds into these alone i'll do them off camera and then we'll come back for these other sort of interesting stuff okay and remember when i was complaining about this not going up high enough well yep yeah, they realize with these smart canisters which are now showing, now that I'm on the beta branch, uh, as far as how full they are. Um, well, now we can go up. I guess we can use V to the smaller increments. <laughs> One, yeah, or we just use our labeler. Uh, why don't we say, why don't we give this an option of um, 16,000, 16, I think. Whoops. Yep, because if it's double normal tanks, the double normal canisters, I should say, in terms of the smart gas canister. That would be 20,000. So I want to leave enough of a, uh, a backstop just in case any temperature issues occur. And uh, otherwise, yeah, keep everything fed, I guess. Uh, so that's one. I do need to upgrade the oxygen one as well to use smart gas. This is CO2. Um, but other than that, that's fine. I quite enjoy that. So... We can also, hopefully, use the, uh, maybe the back pressure regulator will also have an increased value. If not, we can design other things, but that's more for pressure release or check valves, that kind of thing. Uh, I don't need to worry about it too much other than just to be able to uh, set things here. Let's just set this one. Oh, no, 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 not until we put gas, mark gas canisters in there. That's fine. That's fine as is at 8,000. 16,000 is now easy to set. Great. Okay, so I've removed a lot of the rock and let's head down here. So now you're gonna see those four chutes. They're gonna go back into the four furnaces. That one hasn't been splied yet. It's still burning, well, cooking oil, uh, oil? <laughs> iron for us for uh, to make these chutes in the first place. I put one sorter in here so you can see what I mean. It should alternate between these two, I think by default. So then we can put another sorter in here as we need to choose where it's going. So it's gonna be right in front of those two. And obviously you can't really mirror these to, to have this right in the middle. So it doesn't much matter there. All we need to do is just rotate it a little bit. And in fact, let's just put these uh, these uh, shoots in place because that, that should let me know exactly where I need to place the sorter straight. And where is the power connectors for these? Is that power? Or is that, uh, is it just power? It's like just power, so data needs to go... Well, maybe it's power and data. Let me just drop this and you'll be able to tell. Yeah, power and data, fine. So they're both addressable on this side. And then we can just uh, look to flip this around. And here's the one that we want to actually program. So uh, we can put that right here. And whitelist should go into that tube. Oh, no, in fact, no, this isn't the program one. This is the first sorter. That's fine. So we want to build it this way. Uh, grab some more shoots. 
uh, not a corner. We want a straight. There we go. And we're going to bring that this way. Uh, we're going to do a straight out of here, then a corner. I <laughs> It's not easy to place these shoots. They seem to need a certain range before they'll they'll attach to anything, which is slightly annoying, that has to be said. Uh, there we go. And then straight between the two. <laughs> I know you want to join up. Look, just join. There you go. Oh, there you go. There you go. Okay, so now that should evenly distribute. So four stacks go in. We should get one stack to each of the four furnaces. And then from the other side of this, uh, I'll just put that away for a second. We're then going to want to have the programmable sorter. And that means I need to just quickly grab my drill and uh, stop highlighting stop highlighting the uh, my backpack. And we just needed to clear out a little bit more room because we're going to need the other sorted move down here from upstairs. I don't think it'll retain its programming, unfortunately, so I am going to have to reprogram it. But that's no big deal. Uh, we have enough on here. Now, do remember that once we finish with our furnaces, once they've finished uh, producing everything, they're going to come out the front side. So, if we want to send our stuff back uh, to base, if you like, back to wherever we decide to deposit stuff into. In this case, uh, you know, we have another ch another chutes running along here to a, like a deposit area here or something or along the back of the fabricator or even just in front of the fabricator so we can just feed stuff in. I don't want to feed it in automatically, but that means that if as long as we join um, the junctions here, right, let's just have a look. Do I have enough chutes? I do not have enough chutes yet. Um, they take three iron each, so I'm going to need to refeed this with more iron. More iron. There we go. We don't get very many shoots out of each uh, stack of iron, unfortunately. So let's just set that off. So if we have a shoot running this way, we can put a junction in it. And junctions are directional, so you can say it only goes one way. So if we go up and in from this side, then the output will always face that way. So the stuff that gets rejected, i.e. the coal and the belts, like the mining belts, will come in a parallel line along here, underneath, join a junction right here, and then shuttle into the deposit area with everything else. So out of it, we should, well, <laughs> the only problem about not putting stackers after your, uh, after your assembling machines. So with that, we should be able to just deposit everything, both our processed ores and everything else. And then all we need to do once we've finished, and this will not be this episode, I'll do it between the episodes, is just put walls up and really capture just with an active vent on all the time or something like that and just go straight out the back and put it into this same exhaust system that we've already got running. So we can capture all those hot gases and uh, we can either use the heat to keep our... <laughs> catch the shoots. Uh, we either use the heat to, again, make this even more efficient, as we talked about, or we can just, you know, grab it once it's finished. So let me just uh, grab each of these. I'm going to then just finish off the rest of the shoots. I'm going to move that sorter downstairs. I'll do it off camera, of course, so you'd have to watch me do all of this. And then we'll be ready for reprogramming, I think, hopefully. OK, so here's what I mean. The separate line comes down below us and it comes all the way from that first sorter here so anything that's on the black this should go ahead this way and up out through the junction and then into our holding area wherever that may be okay so down below here now i've turned on the sorters and the stacker we've got power coming from over there there's a power controller just to keep all this on its own network it's going to come down here, and everything down here is addressable, including the furnaces. So the front of the furnaces are all connected. There's no other connection back to the base, so it all comes through that one power connector. So if we turn on the computer here, we should see a bunch of sorters. However, <laughs> one of them is called filter sorter, so I took a little bit of initiative and renamed it before we got to this part. And uh, unfortunately, we can't set a white blacklist, so... Let's set a whitelist. Uh, what I'm hoping, however, is that they do not, when I say ores, 
that doesn't include coal. And I guess we'll be able to test that. Or, yes. Uh, we could set individual ores, of course. That 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 would work as well. So, um, if needed, can we set um, iron ore? In fact, let's just leave it at ore for now, and let's see what happens. Well, let's see what happens when I can select something. Let's go back up to the top. So user interface glitches sometimes. Let's just click on ore in the list. There we go. Okay, so that's configured, hopefully. I'm not sure if that stays if the computer's off. Hopefully it does. Well, let's give this a go, shall we? So I'm going to need a mining backpack. And I'm going to put three things in. I'm going to put some coal. Let's just put that two bottle away. Uh, ooh, that's full of... Well, that's full of iron. That's got all... That's got... Uh, yeah, it's got some of the stuff we need in it. So let's just... Uh, remove that. Let's remove that. Remove that. So we've now got iron, copper. In fact, we only really need... Yeah, we only need two things. We need copper ore. Sorry, iron ore. Coal. And the belt. And this should let us test it, I think. So if we just grab this down here. And let's put it through. And let's see what happens. So in it goes. There goes the iron, there goes the coal. Nope, the coal is going to the furnaces. <laughs> well, no, in fact, no, it isn't. Uh, if this won't let it in, because it's not on. Uh, I need to remove that. That. Oh, my, remove that to a bolt. <laughs> I need to make sure to switch these on before I block things with shoots, unfortunately. Uh, where's my tool belt? There we go. Should be quite a quick one to fix. However, that does mean that I need to make another change to our... There we go. So that, that's the iron. It went probably this way somewhere. This is on as well, so that should have gone up to one of the furnaces. Uh, there we go. So that's on, so we can just put the chute back. Once I get long enough range for it to accept it. There we go. Okay, so we need to handle coal somewhere. Did our belt, however, head up there? And has that been deposited at the end? It has. Look at that. So all we need to make sure now is our coal does as well. And that's going to need a bit of programming. I'm going to need to manually put in the ores, it looks like. If that's whitelist, uh, then we're out of luck. Uh, I can't... Unless I can set a blacklist... No. That's remarkably inconvenient. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to set one for each ore. Uh, let me just use the common ores and everything else can get rejected. I can uh, then think about adding those manually later. Okay, so for now I've left it iron, copper, gold. Those are the three metals that I'm all, always needing uh, when I put this everything through the system. So that should work. Um, let's just turn that off for the moment. Head out here and then we can go and retest. So I'm going to just go and get this mining belt. Whoops, uh, I need to just put the tool away. And let's put that there for now. Get this mining belt on. And let me just select some other stuff. So our coal should be around here somewhere. Yes, it is. Let's put you in here. And let's put you, let's put some copper. Well, actually, no, not copper. No, no, copper's fine. We've put it on the list. Yep. And for those of you who are eagle-eyed, yes, I haven't connected the power up to the power to the furnaces yet. I don't know whether we can get the power in through this area because the, the power port is right there. If we can't, I'll just need to make one straight and then a corner and down. Uh, it's no big deal anyway. We can do it either way, but uh, it'd be nice if they can get compact like this. If they can't, then, you know, there's no big deal. I may have to do the electronics next episode, actually. It depends. I think I'm actually running out of time for this one, but let's get this tested now. So um, let's put it in here. So coal goes, copper goes, belt goes. Up here and out. That, oh, yep, there's our coal. It rolled, I hope. <laughs> I don't think I would do this. And now there's our belt. And in the input slots of these furnaces now should be uh, a copper in one and iron in another, I think. 
if it's selected correctly. Uh, now we can't easily tell, I don't think, because these don't have windows. I guess we could put window slots on them as the last leg, but just let me just see if I can get power in here first. Where's my... Oh, I could get my tool belt again. <laughs> Swapping backwards and forwards. So let's just grab the tool belt. All right, now will you let me connect up uh, behind the scenes? I need to put some flooring back in at some point, but until I've got the older power connectors in there, I don't want to, uh, to tempt fate. So we need to... I'm probably going to run out the back here with a four, maybe a four-way corner and around the back that side. Again, we'll pull everything through that same um, power controller. I need, definitely need my, uh, my jetpack here. Okay, so let's see if we can get cables. No, it doesn't look like it, does it? It's not liking that at all. If we set that to junction... Nope. It's not liking that there. It's not liking that one further up. Let's go up one. Nope. Okay, so I'm going to have to move those back, which means it's not terrible, because I can actually now test whether this... Uh, whether the ores went to the right place. And there is a bug, by the way. If you um, if you have something in your inventory like this in place mode, put it in here. It's still in place mode, even though it's no longer in your hand. Very annoying bug. <laughs> but uh, I'll cope with it until it gets fixed. So, not in you. Ah, there we go. There's, there's the copper. And hopefully our iron should be in here. No. Where's our iron gone, then? It would have to be in here somewhere, unless it's jammed between some of the sorters down below. I'll have to check that out. So I just need to deconstruct the chutes here. Or it could have also actually gone out this way and down, because this is actually open and still connected to the sorting system. So if that were the case, it would be down here. So, ah, <laughs> there it is. Cool. Nice to know our system is predictable and working. <laughs> as it's supposed to, uh, even when I don't want it to. So, yeah, we're going to have to move both of those back, aren't we? Which is no big deal, other than just being difficult to uh, actually get everything into the right places. So, uh, we're going to be having another furnace there, aren't we? So we may as well put junctions on all of these ones. And, um, yeah, I'm going to need to just... Swap. Ah, that bug. So annoying. There we go. And a junction. I'm going to need some more cable coil. But you get the idea. I'll just finish off the rest off camera and then I'll move the um, the chutes one back, back, one backwards. Okay, so everything's now set up. We've got this entire line. I just need to put the last arc furnace from in there over here. Not that I need to do that just yet because we don't have the electronics. The electronics are going to be next episode because the times, uh, the times have run out on me for this episode, unfortunately. We need to uh, get going. Uh, next episode. However, I'll just show you the rest of the setup. I've moved all of these back one, so we've got enough space from the sorters. And then over here, um, I've just put a batch reader. I was just looking to see what we can actually read from it, because it is a very new tool. It doesn't have much in the documentation as yet. So if we have a look here, I was hoping I could just read something from each of these that will be useful. So if we turn this on for a second, and we look at the type, it's it's arc furnace. And this is number one at the moment. We can read the average of any value, the sum, the minimum, or the maximum. So if we look at sum, for instance, and on, you'll see there are three furnaces on. Good. Required power, 15. So when they're on and idle, they're consuming 15 watts. That's not terrible. Idle, two of them are idle. So presumably one has some more in it. Mm. Uh, power mm. I'm not sure what 3 means probably power is on or off so 3 ones. error, no errors activate is 0 for all of them lock is 0 for all of them reagents is 0 for all of them that's the interesting one if we get a bit of ore um, and if I just grab it doesn't really matter what ore I grab let's just grab this Piece of copper that I'll do. Pop down here. Okay, so if that goes into the system, 
it should choose one of them. Will we show up as reagents? Don't think we should. I think that's only when they're on. Yeah, so there's nothing there for us to detect. And then the on, our bats are required power again. So unfortunately, it doesn't look like we can use the batch reader to actually process ores. It would have been wonderful if we'd just gone batch reader and if there was something that said, hey, there's something up there for in all of them, then we have a batch riser and it says activate all furnaces and it'll just try and that'll just be really compact and try to activate them all at once. It doesn't look like we can do that. So that probably means what we'll need to do next episode and obviously you are more than welcome to comment to say, hey, there's a better way of doing this, uh, is to use the slot reader. So if we go to the slot reader by contrast, we can then set an arc furnace, look for the input slot, and then look to see if it's occupied. So that one isn't, that one isn't. Need to get to the next arc furnace. No, no. Is it only showing two arc furnaces? One, two, three. Oh, yeah, there it is. Uh, why aren't you letting me see you? Okay. I clearly need to do some reading on this one. Flashing an error. Doesn't tell me what... Um, oh. I need to choose a slot and a variable occupied. That seems to reset every time I go around. Yeah, that's fine. So, there is one arc furnace with something in it which is good if we just pop up here. There's copper in one. Oh, in fact, no, it's actually... Oh, because I put a stack of ore down here, it's actually split based on this setting. One. Uh, yeah, I don't actually need it to split on one. Uh, v for smaller increments. Whoops. V, there we go. Uh, this would normally not have uh, ore inserted directly. It would normally have a belt going there. So that would then separate stacks. So if we put single belts, single stacks in there, it will distribute things evenly, it looks like. Yeah, you can see it all in there. And I'm surprised there's not one in that end, end unit, but uh, yeah, that's fine. So I'll be putting belts in there, they'll go into full stacks. So we're going to have to use these slot readers next episode. Looking forward to seeing what your solution is. The solution I had last season, again, just to mention it, is to look at the import on one slot reader, in this case, an export on another slot reader, and then two writers saying activate or based on these values. So as soon as something's occupied, hit activate, basically. But that means four chips per arc furnace. If you know a way of avoiding that, do argue about it in the comments. Otherwise, I hope you like this episode. We've got our automated furnace set up. We just need to do the electronics to trigger it all. And we got the nice filtering system off for our ores when we come back from mining. So, if you've liked it, feel free to give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share, etc. as normal. And as always, guys, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.